you know, I had, uh, believe it or not, I actually, I actually owned, like, I think last year, 2017, 2018, yeah, about a year and a half, I owned a little, um, Amazon's best selling, uh, kitchen brand. Okay. And that was going really well, and uh, nothing's wrong with that, but it wasn't really fulfilling and it wasn't really what I wanted to do long term. There was, there was too much, uh, stuff in it out of my control I did not have direct influence on, and, uh, I decided to sell that out and move on to something else, look into different okay. things. Uh, stumbled upon, uh, I think it's, uh, the, the journal, um, review, uh, dot org website. I'm, I'm not sure how I got there. I just, I was there at some point and I was like, okay, this looks cool. So I read the, I, I read the stuff and watched the videos and decided to book a call. Right, right, right. And so that, uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, Amazon, uh, FBA business. Like you were doing that for how long? Probably about a year and a half. Uh, I actually started that the the uh, the day I got out of university. I graduated. I started that. I I done a lot of research um, into a good product to start with, and start out with a little uh, you know some some of these stainless steel uh, glass drinking uh, drinking glasses, and uh, I had you know I, I kind of branded them a certain way. Get, offered some unique value in that. So okay. throughout the process, I actually learned quite a bit about marketing, quite a bit about sales, and all all the you know copywriting, all that kind of stuff. Right, and it kind of introduced me to the the world of a uh, of of online business and I guess offline business too, yeah. uh, and it was pretty good. I mean, it was Amazon's choice. I had like most of the keywords for it. Sold you know sold about 10k uh, in my my top month, which is pretty good for you know pretty small oh, brand. How, how much were you, was the revenue top month? Yeah, revenue about 10k. 10k, and what was the profit out of that? Like, I would 10K. say I averaged about 35 35 percent profit, which is pretty good. Um, I, I could definitely have done better. Like you know, a bigger company can can bring over like, like a whole carton, like a, you know, entire carton of of goods, and you pay for yeah. a carton rather than pay per pound, which is always a a really good position to be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when you say it wasn't really fulfilling you, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, um, a lot of the work was uh, was was simply like looking at the numbers. Uh, going through a, a huge volume of, of potential ways of expanding the product, and also like even though I, I didn't, I did enjoy like the aspect of making money while doing nothing, absolutely nothing. It was just kind of uh-huh. nice. Um, it, I didn't, I didn't really see something that I didn't want to keep putting, say, 10k into a new product or a new shipment, and not really know whether that 10k was ever going to be something I could sell off. Um, just because of the fact that with Amazon, the markets are very volatile. Um, mm-hmm. Something can change overnight. And uh, mm-hmm. you, your account could be closed at any point. So Amazon's a great opportunity, I think, but you need to have uh, some other you know, more stable uh, forms of revenue before you start investing serious money in Amazon. At least that's my opinion. So I wanted to get right. something you know, that I had more control over, basically. So you're investing like 10K into inventory and you, you didn't know at, at any point that is outside your control things your business could be kind of switched off. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with an import export business, but if you import like if you're importing a huge shipment of a product that maybe costs you say, you know, 10k to get into the country, you can you can get stuck at customs and you can spend literally like 3 or 4 or 5 extra thousand dollars down the road just getting your shipment into, you know, into your warehouse if yeah. let's say the customs department randomly decides to inspect your your shipment. I mean, it's not right. something you can control, but it do- now like now your profit margin is gone, like you just have no control over that. Um I was just trying to search like how to make money online and I came across different stuff like day trading, e-commerce, and all the stuff like that, affiliate marketing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and of those, uh, and of those that I mentioned, I actually delved into day trading, which I lost all my savings, which was pretty stupid on my part. Mm-hmm. And then I also did e-commerce, uh, Amazon, FBA, mm-hmm. did that. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that was, so I had the, like I followed the, like I bought the course, I, Followed everything to a T, but nothing was happening. But if anything, I realize it's my fault. I probably could have made it better. But the thing is, with Amazon FBA, it's it's really competition. I mean, even if you have like the best product listings, there are other people out there that are gonna have the same, if not better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just kind of ran into some some tough competition, and you weren't getting much leeway. Uh, yeah, despite following the course of the tea, I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty difficult. Okay. Yeah. 
and like you bought inventory and all that stuff for Amazon if you Oh yeah, dude, you don't want yeah, that was such a hassle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that's that's that is um one of the drawbacks to that business because there's just so much setup that you have to do and, and before you even get to test the marketplace. Right? Yeah. And like the but, thing was like as sorry sorry to interrupt like, like I was watching some YouTube videos on how, like, these, you know, gurus, so to speak, they uh, promote their courses and whatnot, right? And some of them are promoting tactics which are totally against Amazon's policies, and I was actually considering doing that. But then, you know, if I did that, everything that I would have done would have just been undone. So, you know, it just yeah. it wasn't worth it. It just yeah. wasn't oh. worth it. What do you mean by undone? Because Amazon could come and, and ban your account or something like that? Basically, yeah. Basically, in a nutshell. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it mentions here that, you know, you, you were kind of following some Dan Henry's uh, training, a Facebook ad kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Already? What's yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what's kind of like your experience with that? Um, it's It's good. I, I think he does a really good job of putting together his, uh, you know, utilizing click funnels, how to get bait, how to how to create Facebook ads, which, which I'll, I'll be honest, EPA, I, I already knew Facebook ads, how to do all that already, and targeting mm-hmm. all that fun stuff because I I I did a Shopify store, um, oh, okay. sold it, and then and coached some other Shopify owners in the past. Um, okay. But with Dan Henry, um, he does a really good job. It's a really cool model. Um, but from a a brutally honest perspective, um, it's not sustainable. Um, I think I've recognized it's it's not a good idea with Dan, Dan Henry's model to be solely dependent on Facebook. Because if Facebook – the Internet is always going to be around, but Facebook might not be there – tomorrow <laughs> i mean they're yeah. they're they're constantly in the spotlight over this russia thing and their stocks are up and down and and granted they're not just going to go away tomorrow but if facebook ever goes away that model with dan henry goes away with it um and yeah. so i enjoyed it i think it was good but i don't mm-hmm. think it's sustainable because facebook ads the cost went up for those um and mm-hmm. and it's you know it's 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 reliant only on one stream of revenue um, mm-hmm. versus, you know, being, having multiple channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The challenge I had with Facebook ads was um, when when an ad exhausts its audience and it doesn't, it's not profitable anymore, you have to kill the ad, suddenly yes. the business com- comes to a screeching halt. I agree 100%. Right. 100%. So it's like, yes, you can make some money, but it's like, how the same? How long term can you can you keep that profit margin going with Facebook ads? Right, yeah. and that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, because you can have a home run at the beginning, but once you've let, just like you said, I one of the things I I would do is I would get a lot of leads on the front end, mm-hmm. but then it kind of dries up and you turn it off and you have to try to retarget all of that fun stuff. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard to sustain. Right. 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 Um, so on the contrary, what I found in my experience is that, you know, when you build these lead generation properties that run on free traffic, once they're ranked, they're pretty much good to go. Right, they they keep right. generating traffic and, and leads on autopilot. 